All right, so in this problem, I have two to the power of three x plus two to the power of x is equal to 10. So first off, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So two to the power of three x, that's gonna equal two to the power of x to the power of three. So I have this plus two to the power of x is equal to 10. Now I'm going to let two to the power of x equal to the variable y. So now I have y to the power of 3 plus y is equal to 10. Now if I subtract 10 on both sides, I get y to the power of 3 plus y minus 10 is equal to 0. And I'm actually going to rewrite y here as 5y minus 4y. Now, if I rewrite this in the form y to the power of 3 minus 4y plus 5y minus 10 is equal to 0, I can factor a y, so I, y times y squared minus 4 plus 5 times y minus 2 is equal to 0. y squared minus 4, that's the same thing as y plus 2 times y minus 2. I have this times plus 5 times y minus 2 is equal to 0. Now, if I factor out y minus 2, I have y minus 2 times... y times the y plus 2 plus 5. This is all equal to 0. And this is the same thing as y minus 2 times, if I um, distribute y, I have y squared plus 2y plus 5 is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have y minus 2 is equal to 0. And I have y squared plus 2y plus 5 is equal to 0. So first off, for y minus 2 equals 0, I obviously get y equals 2. And for y squared plus 2y plus 5 equals 0. If I use the quadratic formula, I get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4 times 1 times 5 all over 2 which is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of, well, this is 4 minus 20, which is equal to the square root of negative 16. And you can't take the square root of a negative number, so this is wrong. So my only solution for y is 2. Now, going back here, remember how we set 2 to the power of x equal to y. So now I have 2 to the power of x equals 2, meaning x is equal to 1. So now to check, let's go ahead and ahead and plug this back into our equation here. So I have 2 to the power of 3 times 1 plus 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 10. 2 to the power of 3 is 8 plus 2 is equal to 10, meaning 10 is equal to 10. So this is right. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x is equal to 3. So to solve this, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to take the power of 1 over x on both sides. So I have x to the power of x to the power of 1 over x is equal to 3 to the power of 1 over x. Now, x and 1 over x, these two cancel out. So I have x is equal to 3 to the power of 1 over x. Now, if, if I take the w Lambert function of something in form x times e to the power of x, this is equal to x. So the W Lambert function basically says if I take something, if I take the W Lambert function of something to form x times e to the power of x, that's equal to x. So in this case, I'm going to replace x with the W Lambert function. Or actually, before doing that, I'm going to rewrite 3 to the power of 1 over x as e to the power of ln 3 to the power of 1 over x. And e and ln, these two cancel out. So e to the power of ln 3, that's the same thing as 3. And now, this is the same thing as e to the power of ln 3 over x. So now, if I multiply both sides by ln 3 over x, these two cancel out, and I get ln of 3 is equal to 
e to the power of ln 3 over x times ln 3 over x. And now I can go ahead and take the W Lambert function of this. So I have to take it on both sides. So now this side is simply equal to ln 3 over x. Now, if I multiply both sides by x, these two cancel out, and I get x times w lambda function of ln3 is equal to ln3. And now if I divide both sides by w of ln3, I get x is equal to ln3 over w of ln3. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 18 is equal to 81 to the power of x. So I want to find the value of x here. So to start, I'm going to first take the power of 1 over x on both sides. So now I have x to the power of 18 to the power of 1 over x is equal to 81 to the power of x to the power of 1 over x. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So in this case, I have x 81 to the power of x to the power of 1 over x, and I have x to the power of 18 to the power of 1 over x. So this is the same thing as x to the power of 18 times 1 over x is equal to 81 to the power of x times 1 over x. So then these two cancel out. I'm left with x to the power of 18 over x is equal to 81. Now if I subtract 81 on both sides, or sorry, actually if I subtract x to the power of 18 over x on both sides, these two cancel out and I have 0 is equal to 81 minus x to the power of 18 over x. And now I'm going to rewrite this as 0 is equal to 81 minus x to the power of 1 over x to the power of 18. So I simply wrote this like this in this form. Now if I take the power of 1 over 18 on both sides, I get 0 is equal to 81 to the power of 1 over 18 minus x to the power of 1 over x to the power of 18 to the power of 1 over 18. And then these two cancel out, and I get 0 is equal to 81 to the power of 1 over 18 minus x to the power of 1 over x. So now if I add x to the power of 1 over x on both sides, these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of 1 over x is equal to 81 to the power of 1 over 18. Now, 81, this is the same thing as 9 squared, so now I have x to the power of 1 over x is equal to 9 squared to the power of 1 over 18. 2 times 1 over 18, that's 1 over 9, so I have x to the power of 1 over x is equal to 9 to the power of 1 over 9, meaning x is equal to 9.